when a brand or retailer comes to MetaWare and they want us to work with them, um, you know, what we say is, okay, listen, don't try to get from point A to point Z overnight. Let's be very strategic and try to be efficient and consolidate and maybe just start with a simple fabric or maybe just two fabrics. Don't try to like, you know, be everything and all things to all people right out of the gate with too much. Start simple, right? But start somewhere, right? The journey of a thousand miles begins with one step, one step at a time, and we're gonna do it right. today's episode of Staying Curious. I'm your host, Amy Hirschkel, and today's guest is Marcy Zeroff. Marcy coined the term eco-fashion in 1995 and is an internationally recognized eco-lifestyle expert, educator, innovator, serial entrepreneur, and author of the book Eco-Renaissance. She is also founder and CEO of Eco-Fashion Corp., a greenhouse of brands, including business-to-business turnkey sustainable fashion and home manufacturer MetaWare, regenerative organic cotton farm project Reset, affordable size-inclusive QVC Max Market organic lifestyle brands, farm to home and seed to style, and the new direct-to-consumer eco-creation retail platform, Yes And. She is also the founder of Under the Canopy, producer of Thread Documentary, Driving Fashion Forward, and co-founder of Good Catch, Beyond Brands, and the Institute of Integrative Nutrition. Marcy has been instrumental in driving authenticity, environmental leadership, and social justice worldwide for over three decades. Board member of the Textile Exchange and Organic Center Organic Trade Association, and recipient of countless awards, Marcy is also featured in the book, Eco Amazons, 20 Women Who Are Transforming the World, and is a Henry Crown Fellow of the Aspen Institute. Join me, please, in welcoming Marcy. <laughs> Thank you so much, Amy. It's great to be here. <laughs> Thank you, Marcy, for joining a us. A <laughs> You've done a few things in your career. <laughs> Never a dull moment. doing it. <laughs> Thank you. Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> <laughs> right. You want it to be busy. And so therefore you are. <laughs> That's it. Never a dull moment. Exactly. So um, talk to us a little bit about what you're currently doing and, and kind of set yeah. the stage of where you are now after your long, illustrious career. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm doing now, hopefully, is the grand finale. Um, but it's, you know, 30 years in the making. So I'm currently the founder and CEO of Eco Fashion Corp. Of course, building off of my namesake, uh, you know, defining this movement 30 years ago or almost 30 years ago. And, um, and so Eco Fashion Corp, we call ourselves a greenhouse of brands. We share the common soil kind of modeled after the old school house brands, except all of our house, all of our brands are green. Right. And share the same soil, which the soil is really built by MetaWare. MetaWare is the engine of the whole company. It's our turnkey manufacturing platform, which I'm sure we'll dive further into. Um, but it really is a way to make sustainability easy for other brands and retailers. You know, uh, given that I serve on a number of boards and given that I've been, you know, very active and instrumental in, in pioneering this space, I've really seen where a lot of the pain points are, where a lot of the challenges and obstacles are, where a lot of the complexities are. And so I've tried to build a model with MetaWare, almost like an Intel inside, right? That is the engine that can fuel a brand or a retailer or an NGO or even a celebrity or influencer to create product that is embedded from farm or raw material all the way to finished product with social and environmental accountability. So it's a plug and play bespoke manufacturing platform that is here to meet brands and retailers exactly where they are because everybody's in a different place on the spectrum and then help them get where they wanna go. So really a, a solution provider. And with that, we also launched a couple of our own house brands that are there also to either serve at the mass market level, like seed to style or farm to home, which are basically leveraging the MetaWare platform to go all the way to, in the case of those brands, phase one was QVC, and now we're going beyond QVC as well. And then we have the yes and 
brand, which is really building off of my life work and my mantra that yes, you can have everything you want in, in fashion, that's style, quality, fit, color, comfort, hand, price, everything that, you know, would make you want to buy something, right? That you love it. It looks good. And then there's the feel good and do good in the world because the and is, oh, by the way, it's also ethically made, fair trade, organic or regenerative or circular or biodegradable or all of the above, low impact dyed, um, and every touch point all the way through, you know, the packaging and the trans the transportation every single touch point in the supply chain is monitored and yes and becomes a platform to go all the way from farm to consumer so that we can partner with other brands or ngos and you know nonprofits such as the rodale institute or the women's earth alliance or the ram das foundation or the united nations where or fashion innovation where we've created partnerships and been able to bring merch to the market um through the yes and platform as well as you know, partnerships with influencers and partnerships with other brands like Ha, We Are Ha, where we did a, a love collection together. So it's all about eco-creation. And that's really, again, the, you know, fundamentally at the eco-fashion core, we're all about one plus one equals 11, right? We're stronger together than we are apart. So yes. everywhere we can join forces with others in the industry, no matter where they are, it's going to help us get farther and faster together. So it's funny because you mentioned uh, this is sort of your, your, you might be your, your end, your, your swan song, um, <laughs> you know, so is that, I'm, I'm a, you know, years and years of doing this meta where sort of became this necessity almost where you had to do it yourself, show people how it can be done. And now you want to teach others and help other brands do it successfully. So it sounds like you, you develop this brand and all of your, like, yes, and, and all of these other brands, you sort of became, you, you didn't just develop the thing, you actually are doing it. And then now you can say, look, I was able to do it and be successful. Now let me help you as well. Why, why now? Like what, what's, what's happening now? What's different now? So, yeah, when I, when I first, you know, coined the term eco fashion, 1995 and founded under the canopy the first sustainable fashion and home brand you know there were there was a lot of resistance right a lot of naysayers like sure marcy who will ever buy into that people who are into fashion they don't care about the environment and social justice and you know the the stigma or sort of myth was that people who were more conscious even if they were eating conscious food they could care less about fashion right so it, it became kind of this bridge building for me. How do I style the world of change and change the world of style and bridge the fashionista and the tree hugger? Because I kind of considered myself, you know, that person, right. That was living a more conscious lifestyle, but I got best dressed in high school. I always loved fashion. You know, it was always something that was a form of expression and creativity for me and for everybody for that matter. Um, so I was like, how do I bring those worlds together? And, you know, the whole idea from the beginning was one step at a time and build supply chain chains from the ground up, right? So I couldn't walk into a factory back in the day and be like, hey, I want to do this sustainably, organically, or, you know, fair trade, ethically, you know, and, and sort of layer in all the things that were important to my core values. Because technically, I mean, the factories were like, huh, what? It was hard enough to build backwards into their supply chains with conventional production. And now you're asking them to start looking at, you know, fibers and materials and manufacturing processes and certifications and compliance and all these things that were like, wait, what? You know, I, I don't, that's not what I do. Right. And so I started to realize that I had to do a lot of hands holding through the years and take factories through these certifications and help them build their systems or rebuild them, help, you know, rebuild and regenerate soil through organic and regenerative practices and launch farm projects and help farmers get into the system. And I've been doing that my entire career in, in building under the canopy and then becoming a consultant for other companies. You know, I realize how complicated and how complex navigating all these, you know, issues and supply chains and certifications and how daunting it is. And so as the world kind of woke up during the pandemic more than ever before. I mean, listen, I don't make light of the pandemic, but the one gift it gave us was we couldn't go outside, but we could go inside. We could reset our own priorities and read and look at what really mattered. You know, if you don't have health and wellness, what do you have? And because I started my career on the food side, you know, in 1990, 
as you, you know, very briefly mentioned, I co-founded a school that today is known as the Institute for Integrative Nutrition and is the world's largest holistic health nutrition school, certifying almost 200,000 health coaches around the world. So I was already sort of very aware of the what you would put in our bodies matters, the farm to table movement, the organic methodologies in agriculture, like that was a big part of my life work. So then it became how do we evolve? How do we take the next step kind of in the spirit of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? We go from our first basic need is food, and then we ask, what else? What's next? What more? Well, shelter and clothing is our next basic need. So how do we take that and start to, you know, unpack all the impacts of the fashion and textile industry? And the more I did that work, the more I realized, again, how complicated it was. And so MetaWare was born to really serve the industry and leverage my almost 30 years of doing this for my own brands. And now instead of for one brand or one company, I'm able to really accelerate my work and scale impact. If this is like a, you know, I pinch myself every day, right? Because, you know, very metaphorically, as we are waking up coming out of the pandemic, it's because the light in our own personal source is going on. Mm -hmm. And right, it's waking us up. And so, again, metaphorically, that's what's happening in the supply chains, in our industry, where everybody is now going to the source and looking at not just what's in my food from farm to table, but what's in my clothes? Who made it? How is it being made? You know, what are the inputs? Is there anything there that's harming me or the people that are growing and sewing my products? Right. So now it's this whole new way of looking at our industry, looking at product and people are overwhelmed. And they're like, oh, shit, like, I, I know I need to get on this train. I know I need to make a science based climate target. Right. Yeah. I yeah. know I need to diversify my supply chains beyond China. Now I can't have all my eggs in that basket anymore. And I also know that I need to be into incorporating more sustainable cotton into my cotton textiles. How do I do all that? So therein lies, you know, MetaWare and, you know, Building a bowl is kind of the model, right? Menu one, what are the stories you want to tell? Menu two, what are the products you want to make? And MetaWare makes women's, men's, kids, baby, home, pet, knits, wovens, um, sweaters, denim, every category in textiles. And then menu three, what are your price targets? And we work from mass to class right? From high-end fashion designers all the way through to your biggest mass market retailers. And, and we, you know, can scale their, uh, their programs as big as they want to with proper forecasting and planning. But we're equipped with our platform and MetaWare, our office in India and overseas with our whole team on the ground to run product development, production, oversight on compliance certifications, um, quality control, inspections, logistics, and then we embed your full package program with a marketing toolkit that says, meet the farmer and the factory workers. Here's your blockchain technology that we have all these layers we can add on that, you know, really talk about the who and the what and the where and the why and the when with ESG data and impacts coming up the supply chain um, into the blockchain and a QR code technology that is being launched this year. So, so, um, you know, I, it's also, you, you would talked a little bit about, you know, everything's coming to light and, you know, the pandemic is as bad as it was, there was some light at the end of that tunnel and it just brought more awareness and social media, obviously you can't hide anymore. I mean, we've seen many brands go down lately, um, because they, they just can't hide. Like people are calling you out, uh, and it could be, somebody as small as, you know, somebody at the uh, town next door is just calling out somebody and the next thing it blows up because it's social media. So are you finding that it's um, this metaware, this, this sort of vertical integration is um, working mostly for brands that want to start being sustainable, uh, having, you're getting more luck with existing brands, established brands who are looking for help. Um, tell us a little bit about who really is starting to see this as a critical step in their their business model. It's really interesting because everybody, whether you're a fashion brand, you're a lifestyle company, or you're a food or, you know, beauty company, you're a nonprofit, everybody seems to touch touch textiles, right? Whether it's full collections 
or it's item driven in your stores, or it's even, you know, a, 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 an item that you're using for a giveaway, a marketing campaign or a fundraising, you know, opportunity, right? So when we see the breadth of the MetaWare client, it ranges from a Dr. Mercola, who we launched their entire textile category. I mean, I, you know, initially when I was running under the canopy, I wrote the business plan for Whole Foods Market to get into textiles and launched a store in store, a 2000 square foot apparel store, you know, in the middle of Whole Foods, right? So it could be that side. It could also be high fashion. So we're working with companies that have, conglo you know, conglomerates of brands that are all luxury and high fashion contemporary brands that don't know anything about sustainability, but they know that the customer is now asking for it and the market is now demanding it. And so they're saying, we need to get there, but we don't know what we're doing. We would love to partner with you because putting our worlds together, we believe we can get where we need to go and also do it right, which is a, a key piece of this. We also have mass market and, and many retailers who've started the journey. So it's not like they're coming from you know ground zero, but they, they still, they're huge bureaucracies and they're so siloed within the way that the, the retailers are built that they don't have the holistic lens that we might come in as a third party to see things they're not seeing and also to be able to connect the dots from design and sourcing and sustainability and marketing and finance and, and you know production. We're able to work with all the different departments in, a, in more of a, the way that MetaWare works is almost like an ecosystem. Them, right because we're source to story we're not just a full package manufacturer we are building into that all the assets and when you talk about social media you know it's really it's not only not just about staying ahead it, anymore it's about not being left behind but it's also about risk mitigation in the sense that if you do something and it's a misstep whether it's knowingly or unknowingly you can be eaten alive you know by today's consumer they are brutal and not only do they want to talk about great things they see and do are doing but they also want to call out those who are you know doing things not the way they should be or not being transparent enough or you know so it's a whole new day today the internet has changed the game and social and digital media and you know now we're moving into the whole web 3 and the metaverse and like it's all you know like access to information is only accelerating i mean that's where technology is just playing this massive role in our industry because you can't hide anymore you know as soon as we start digitizing our supply chains which is already happening and then there's you know there's actually legal frameworks that are being put in place like you know the new york sustainable fashion act right or yeah. the fabric act right where suddenly there's going to be a if that bill passes you're talking about you know it's it's illegal to not if you're 100 million in business or more in new york which a lot of the big companies are right you know you're going to have to prove you know how your your 50 percent of your supply chain has to be transparent and how you're getting from point a to point b and you're going to have to make a science-based climate target and then back that up every step of the way i mean there are things coming that are just like what for me i mean i like not only is every cell in my body smiling because i always knew it would be you know a when not an if i always knew eventually people were going to have to wake up to the magnitude and multitude of impacts in our industry because business as usual with the proliferation of fast fashion cannot continue like this yeah. we are driving ourselves into you know not only into the landfills but into a, a state of complete degradation of our land and oceans ecosystems because of you know, waste and water and energy use in fast fashion and chemical use and, and all these impacts that we're, you know, second largest polluter in the world, right? Next to coal, you know, is, is kind of general rule of thought. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny because, you know, it's not only just that people want to change the world or they're worried about the climate, but you also have to keep up with the shifts of what the demand, what's happening with the demand. I mean, it's, you know, fast fashion isn't just dying because it's polluting. It's dying because people are changing their mind, you know, like they want, they don't want the mass market of the, you know, they, they, one day they think they want pink, the next day somebody wears yellow. And then now all the pink is just wasted in landfills and getting thrown away. And then there's the discounting. And so it's just like a whole other way of kind of 
thinking about the supply chain and based on the demand of the consumers. And then you couple that together with the fact that they want transparency and they're demanding to know how everything is going. It's like you said, it's only a matter of time before you either are on board and doing it correctly or you're not going to survive. Or Yeah, I always say it's like, you know, you're going to be out of the game and it's not even about making fashion sustainable anymore. It's about making sustainability fashionable. And that's what's happening is it's cool to be it's cool to be conscious now that generation. They're saying like, no way, I don't want to be a part of something that is so bad anymore. And I want to see what I'm buying and who I'm supporting. And, you know, and they want to know about the brands and what their values are. And, you know, this whole great resignation is, you know, I don't think it's necessarily that everyone's leaving the workforce and then just going to the beach. It's like they, they're looking for jobs with purpose. They're looking yeah. for life they with want purpose. An they're looking, <laughs> yeah. And they, and they want to be a part of the solution, not the yes. problem. Cause you know, we all know Albert Einstein said, we can't solve today's problems with the same consciousness that created them. We have to change our consciousness. We have to climb that ladder and change the perspective that we have about the products that we're putting in on and around our bodies and our lives and our communities and our planet, right? You know, there is no planet B. Yeah. And, and, you know, technology since, you know, especially since COVID, I mean, we here at Lectra just definitely noticed that people are jumping on technology faster than ever with e-commerce and, and data and needing data and data and data. I mean, more data. Totally. <laughs> um, and if you don't have these technologies to be able to understand what's happening with your supply chain and how you're connecting points of, you know, one point of your supply chain over here on the West Coast with, you know, someone over in China, you're, you're losing, you know. So talk a little bit about how important technology is going to be for for metaware and for your your uh business model yeah very very important so i would say this that you know it starts with fiber and material innovation that's a big part of a lot of the technologies right now are taking things like you know biomass and and food waste and turning them into new fibers and materials right so we need material change then you talk about you know the technologies out there the whether they're on demand and direct to garment printing like from Cornet, right? We're building a partnership that's that's underway right now with Metaware and Cornet. Um, we're gonna be launching a blanks program so we can do on demand printing and making that customization, you know, not only, you know, quick, easy, um, but also non toxic. Right, because you know we're Cornet and and Metaware both, you know, really hang our hats on non-toxic inks, non-toxic fibers and materials, right? And then looking at you know again minimizing you know energy use and wastewater, and so you know and and ultimately reducing waste. So now we look at sustainability and you know every which way that we can be more. Um, efficient in making samples and doing fitting, right? So there's all these new 3D technologies. I mean, you've got Chloe, you've got SETI and, you know, and companies now that are enabling us to, you know, be smarter and reduce the amount of back and forth that's going on, be more efficient, even simulating fabrics and drapes. I mean, the technologies that are coming around, you know, this category are just mind blowing. And so, and then, you know, looking at obviously connecting content and commerce and looking at every which way to drive, you know, all these disruptive business models around resell and, you know, and reuse and regenerating and, you know, and circularity. And, and then of course, in the, in the world of production, you know, companies like Lectra and, you know, all of the, all of the technologies that are out there that are creating a smart factory opportunity to make smarter fashion. Like we are just at the beginning of all this, right? Like, you know, you think Bitmoji is forward, like, you know, (laughs) check out dress X, right? Like you you talk about these avatars and you could have an entire virtual closet now. And then, you know, finding that balance between the physical and the virtual worlds, it's changing everything. So though that's, same person that wants social media and they want a different outfit every day, we can start weaning them off of fast fashion and moving them into that marriage between a virtual and a physical world, right? So, you know, everything from, you know, there's just so much, I mean, wearable technologies and online design. And I mean, it's, we're just getting started, but I'm like a little kid in a candy store because most of these technologies are creating more efficiencies, less waste, less you know, use of our resources and ultimately better quality product at the end of the day that's 
you know, what we want instead of a lot of, you know, excess and a lot of, you know, stuff that we're buying guessing, right? We can be more on demand and we can be more productive in, in doing so and then make more money, right? right. Ecology economy. Exactly. And, and helping consumers really understand the value of what it is that they're wearing, you know, because obviously cost becomes a, a big issue. You know, a lot of people buy, you know, the dis heavily discounted garments because they cost a lot and they want to change their wardrobe. But you come up with a different way to service those people, teach them about quality and make them part of the part of the supply chain, part of the experience. They tend to be more brand loyal, they tend to be more invested, and they'll pay more money because of the story behind it. So and it's just and they, like, and they want that. Yeah, I mean, yes. they sorry, they want they want these okay. stories. And that's why the model really is, you know, source to story, right? It's no longer yep. like these separate buckets, because you can't tell a story. Like I worked with one of the biggest retailers in America, um, and launched their first sustainable textile program, organic bed sheets, if you will, um, back in 2006. And that entire program was being driven by the marketing department and the rest of the, you know, we had to like hard sell, you know, production and sourcing. Like they were like, Oh, it's going to cost an extra couple of pennies. Like we don't, we don't want to break the mold of, you know, what we're already doing. And it, there was so much resistance, but today all these sustainability efforts at the, you know, large company level, they're being driven by product design and development. They're not being driven by marketing anymore. But yet, if you've done the work and you've got, you can prove it out with, you know, a traceable supply chain certifications, which of course aren't perfect, but they're way better. You have the ability to say, you know, we've done the, the hard work. Now you should be able to tell the story because, you know, that's what the consumer wants, the right product at the right price with the right story. They want no compromise. That's why yes and really sums up everything that I do and why MetaWare is here to, you know, help those companies get there, right? And serve them to, you know, meet their needs. And everything is very much tailored to what their needs are because there's so many different choices to make, right? There isn't one path here, right? It's like diet, you know, you might be keto, you might be macrobiotic, you might just be vegetarian, you might be vegan, you might be, you know, cut back, you know, just one day a week less of meat, whatever your choice is, you are where you are, right? And so everybody is somewhere on the journey in a different place. It's about making, taking one step at a time, one step forward, right? And we've, and Never we, back. You, and I, you and I have also, I've talked about this too, where it's the, the relationship that between the fashion industry and the food industry are so, there's so many parallels. I mean, I was somebody who, you know, a couple of years ago, occasionally bought organic and kind of paid attention to what I was buying, but was very kind of, you know, conscientious of how much I was more I was spending. Now it's, I don't even think twice about what, what kind of meat I'm buying. I mean, I can't even, I don't, I don't even like the taste of the meat unless it's, you know, grass fed. So it's like all of a sudden there's this switch and now food that is better for you and made in a better way, more sustainable, more um, conscient, conscientious of the environment is just more readily available. And money and cost, yes. Do you pay a little more? Of course, absolutely. But now you have so much more of that available, you're more likely to participate in it. So mm -hmm. that parallel in my world, in my mind of the fashion industry, you it, once we get to that point where you pretty much have multiple options to be to buy sustainable fashion and to be more aware of what you're buying is going to be like the food industry you're it's not going to be i can only go to this one brand and buy this one very expensive thing to know that i'm getting organic cotton it's going to open up a whole new world so talk a little bit about these parallels that you've been experiencing since you obviously are in both <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, they're, they're very interconnected industries, right? And on so many levels. So first of all, you know, we talk about cotton. Cotton is a third of the world's textiles, right? Our bed sheets and our, and our towels and our robes, but also all of our t-shirts and our denim and our, you know, so much of our clothing, right? Baby clothing and adult clothing, everything. So, you know, we need to be looking at a different lens of cotton. We've been told that cotton is a natural fiber, but if you actually, you know, pull the curtain back and you look at the way cotton is grown and sewn, you know, there's a misconception that because it's not food that you can spray it like crazy because we're not eating it, right? Mm -hmm. But cotton is one of the most heavily sprayed industries in agriculture. And then that doesn't include all the processing with chlorine bleach and then all the heavy toxic dyes, flame retardants, 
formaldehyde, heavy metals that could be added in finishing and processing and dyeing and printing, plastisol and ugh, right? So all that toxic chemicals. But 60% of a cotton plant goes into the food stream. So when you gin cotton, when you harvest it and you gin the cotton, you take the seeds out, the seeds are broken down and given to um, feed for dairy or they're broken down and turned into cottonseed oil, which goes into snacks and food, bread products. And so when you start looking at, you know, 83% of Americans are buying organic food, at least occasionally, and Costco is now the biggest buyer of organic food in America, you know, this is no longer to your point like this niche thing, people, it's accessible now, it's affordable, it's, you know, it, it, and people are learning that it's no longer that choice, that it's an imperative, or, an, or you can get value and values, it's not sacrifice and deprivation, you're not giving up taste if it's food, or functionality if it's beauty, or style and quality if it's fashion, right, so all those cotton textiles, we can shift that paradigm now, and we can look at cotton through a different lens, where it can be a part of the solution instead of the problem, right, where we can leverage the power of organic and regenerative cotton to rebuild soil health, because what people don't know is that whether you're talking about food or you're talking about fiber, right, that soil is one of our greatest solutions to climate change, because when you have healthy soil and it's filled with biodiversity, right, it will sequester carbon out of our atmosphere. But when you have dead soil that becomes dirt because you've sprayed it and over-processed, you know, and with all the, the insecticides, the chemical fertilizers, all the, it, the pesticides and the, and the inputs that you're using, not to mention GMO seeds, you're breaking down the ecosystems of the soil, right? You're breaking down the living, breathing system. Mm -hmm. And then it will turn into dirt and then the plants are no longer resilient to climate change. Soil is no longer capturing carbon out of the atmosphere. And the water is no longer being retained from rainwater. So you have to irrigate heavily and use more water. So, you know, it's, it's about, it's not even about doing less harm anymore. It's about doing more good. How can we turn cotton textiles, you know, again, home or apparel into something good that's going to serve you know, the environment and humanity, but instead of something that's going to destroy it, right? So when you think about food and you think about what we put in our bodies, you know, helps define our state of health and well-being. Well, our skin is the largest organ in our bodies. It's our primary organ for absorption. So it's not just what we put in our bodies that matters. It's also what we put on our bodies. So that sort of metaphor of soil is the skin of the earth. It's meant to protect us. Our skin is meant to protect us not meant to be filled with toxic chemicals that are going to be absorbed in no differently than the food we're taking in, you know, orally, right? So there's so much connection. And then you go into, you know, people think, you know, you talk about we eat fish, right? And fish come from the ocean. And we hear about all the plastic in the oceans. And what people don't realize is a third of that plastic is from textiles because every single synthetic garment in the history of mankind that has ever, you know, been produced, it never biodegrades. It just sheds these tiny little microfibers into our washing machines, which go into our rivers, which go into our oceans, which the fish eat like fish food. And you'll see statistics as high as 90% of fish today show traces of microfibers, right? So all that connection of food and fiber on so many levels, whether you're talking about soil or you're talking about oceans, it makes a difference. And that's why we have to be thinking differently about fibers and materials in our, you know, in our industry, because, you know, business as usual just can't continue on every level. Exactly. And we need to think about the textiles. We need to produce less, buy smarter, <laughs> consume right. less as a consumer, <laughs> all of those fun things. Um, so, so tell me, uh, give me three, just, you know, straight up three pieces of advice that you would tell a designer, a starting brand, someone who's an emerging designer who wants to start their brand. What would you give them as three pieces of advice? Okay, so first of all, when, you know, when a brand or retailer comes to MetaWare and they want us to work with them, um, you know, what we say is, okay, listen, don't try to get from point A to point Z overnight. Let's be very strategic and try to be efficient and consolidate and maybe just start with a simple fabric or maybe just two fabrics. Don't try to like, you know, be everything and all things to all people right out of the gate with too much. Start simple, right? but start somewhere, right? The journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. 
one step at a time and we're going to do it right. It's imperative that you don't try to go too fast because there's a high likelihood you'll you'll make a misstep. Secondly, collaboration is key. And in my book, Eco Renaissance, you know, I talk about the five kind of principles of a renaissance or a rebirth. In our case, the rebirth of our industry, you know, built on this, you know, kind of ecosystem and this understanding and this awareness. But, you know, collaboration is fundamental. And I said before, one plus one equals 11 because we're stronger together than we are apart, right? You know, alone we are smart, but together we are brilliant. We can get farther and faster. So partner up with others. The old school competition in our industry, those days are over. It's about cooperation now. You know, work together to achieve common goals. If we're gonna hit our industry-wide carbon footprint or climate commitment of a 45% reduction by 2030, we all need to work together, hold hands, all hands on deck. And third, you know, buyer beware, right? There's a lot of, as I said earlier, complexity. So if you're not working with a company like MetaWare, you know, and you're going at it on your own, just be aware and beware. Because look, there's a lot of misinformation out there. There's a still fraud. I mean, during the pandemic, the, the cotton debacle in Xinjiang, a fifth of the world's cotton was exposed as being grown using forced labor. I mean, holy moly. And some of the biggest companies in the world, you know, many of them were caught with their pants down, right? Because they might have asked, you know, questions, but maybe they weren't the right questions. Maybe they didn't know who to ask. Maybe they didn't oversee or, or, or check on that, you know, the answers, right? So just be careful because at the end of the day, we all go down when, you know, there's, you know, knowing or unknowing cheating right? Fraud is, it hurts everybody. We have to do this right because this isn't a marketing proposition. Sustainable fashion, eco fashion, this is about the future of fashion and it is dependent on doing it right and making real change happen. So let's not just, you know, eat the change and be the change, but let's wear the change we all wish to see in the world. Awesome. So uh, that was very well put. Uh, what is your prediction for the future of fashion manufacturing? Yeah. So I'm doing a good say, job at predicting. So let's see what you said. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we, we touched on it briefly, but, it, you know, we're building at MetaWare, hopefully, if all goes according to plan in 2024, launching um, a factory of the future, which is all about smart fashion. It's about on demand, lean manufacturing, right? And leveraging the power of all these incredible technologies like Lectra, like Cornet, like SETI or Chloe, like, you know, the, the myriad of new technologies that are being born every day, some of which have been, you know, works in progress for a decade and are only now coming to market and still haven't even commercialized. So we are, relatively speaking, at our infancy, but I think the future of fashion is not just about regeneration and circularity, it's about technology. Awesome. Thank you. Well, Marcy, it was a pleasure today. I cannot, I cannot thank you enough for being here with me. Um, I learned so much. I am now going to check all of the labels <laughs> on all of my clothes. Um, I've already done it once. I had a massive purge where I got rid of most of my clothes and try to live smarter. So uh, still have much to learn. So I look forward to speaking with you more. Um, for anyone interested in connecting with Mar Marcy, you can connect with her on our website at marcyzeroff.com and on social media at Marcy Zeroff. Um, also strongly recommend you check out her book, Eco Renaissance, co-creating a stylish, sexy, and sustainable world. It is the Bible for helping you get through this. Um, and if you have any other questions for me, uh, reach out to me as well on LinkedIn. And I wanna thank you all for tuning in and please continue to stay curious and remember to like, subscribe to our social media so that you can not be notified when we have more episodes dropping every month. Thank you all and have a blessed day.